Hey, how you doing? Welcome back to the channel. Good to have you here as always. And hey, if you're new to the channel, thank you so much for tuning in and thank you so much for subscribing. This last week, channel's kind of blown up a little bit. Had hundreds of new subscribers. Absolutely grateful for you all. But I thought this would so be a great opportunity for me to kind of do a little bit of an introduction video, just so everyone knows what I'm about and why I actually make these videos. And because so many people have been asking what gang I was with, I'm gonna be telling you today on this video. Yeah. So buckle up, this is gonna be a good one. So just to give you a little bit of a rundown as to why I do these videos, like why do I talk about gang life and club life? Oh, you know, that's not supposed to be talked about, is it? The videos I make aren't talking about specifically gang life or club life or, or any events that I shouldn't be talking about. All I talk about are my experiences from those years and how they affected me later in life, which is the key point to my videos. I don't do it to glorify it or even big note myself or anything like that. I have no interest in any of that kind of content. But what I am interested in is healing and helping people. And when I first started making these videos, it was kind of just to put myself out there a little bit you know, and just share my stories, even with myself, you know, and just have a record of it. But then so many people started reaching out to me and telling me that my videos were helping them to understand and to see that change is possible, even from these lives. And so that's what I've always been focused on. And I make these videos for all you out there, the ones who have left that life and are still struggling to this day to heal from it or to comprehend all the trauma that was inflicted in those years, as it was with me. Uh, so I'm gonna give you a little bit of a background as to my position with the MC and with the skinhead crew that I was with, just to give you a little bit of an understanding. And I know so many people need to kind of validate who they're listening to, especially when it comes to this kind of stuff. And so, yeah, I don't want anyone thinking that I'm a liar or that I wasn't part of that life because I was. I shouldn't need to justify it or validate it, but I'm going to anyway. So as far as the motorcycle club that I was a hang around with, because that's the thing, I was a hang around. In all my videos, I have said that I was a hang around, which is not a member. I was never a member, I was never a prospect. I was a hang around. What is a hang around? Well, a hang around is someone who hangs around the club. If they have an interest in joining, then you have to hang around the club. You have to hang out with these guys. They want to know who you are. And then they decide you get to move up in the club. I was always just hanging out with the club anyway. I become such good friends with so many of them. For me, it was just going and hanging out with my mates on a Friday night and, you know, having some fun and partying. And I did a lot. I went to all the nationals. I went to all the big parties and I really immersed myself in this life. And before I knew it, you know, I was becoming a, a major supporter, you know. I was wearing everything with the club colors and I'd buy all the t-shirts. And then I also went to Europe in 2002 with the president of the chapter and many of the members of the club. And we went to the world run in Berlin, had an amazing time and I got treated really, really well. I got treated as a hang around and a friend of the club. So when I came back to Australia, the president started talking to me about joining the club and I was like, Oh, yeah, yeah, I could see myself doing this, you know. There was a lot of other stuff going on at the time, and I thought, oh, you know, maybe this would be good for me. And my wife at the time was like, no, 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 I don't want to be married to a biker. And I'm like, oh, yeah, okay, okay, whatever. My friend who was president of the Gold Coast chapter, when we talked about it, he's like, no, bro, no, don't do it. I don't want you in the club, you know, like, just stay out of it. With the pressure from my wife and this, I turned it down. I, you know, said, no, I'm not going to do that at this stage. Maybe later. And they were cool with that. You know, I was still a hang around. I still went to all the events. I still partied. You know, nothing had changed for me whatsoever. And then I moved down to the Gold Coast and I became a hang around with the Gold Coast chapter. I partied with all those guys, they were my friends. So I started drifting away, you know? And the good thing about being a hang around is I didn't have a full commitment to the club. So I didn't have to go to the clubhouse on a Friday night. I didn't have to go attend any of these events. That was entirely up to me. I went less and less. 
But at the time, I'd started hanging out with a few of the skinheads from the Australian scene. Now, I'd made contact with them about some militaria, and I went to one of the meet and greets and met a few of these guys. And I thought, oh, okay, you know, these guys are pretty cool. Maybe I'll go hanging out with them. You know, the first thing I learned from them is they were anti-drug. I was like, great. This is an environment that I need to be around. I looked past the whole racism and all that and went, oh, you know, I'll just hang out with these guys and see what comes of it. And so, yeah, I started hanging out with these guys more and more and got away from the MC. And when I first started hanging out with these guys, I became aware of all the different organizations and the different clubs and associations. And there are so many different names to them. It was hard to keep up. My first introduction was to Blood and Honor. Now, Blood and Honor is a musical movement. There was no official membership. Supported Blood and Honor if you went to the events, you know, bought all the CDs and whatever. You could call yourself Blood and Honor. It was a brotherhood but without leaders, without any kind of structure or anything like that. And it wasn't really for me. At that time, I'd also met a couple of members of the skinhead crew that I eventually patched in with. Now, when I met these guys, these guys were different. They were staunch, you know, real stand-up guys. I thought, okay, now this is more the, the scene that I want to be a part of. And I became really good friends with these two guys. And eventually, I started really getting into this whole scene. And so I started traveling to all these different events and becoming a huge supporter. And then they did ask me to prospect. And I turned it down. I was having a lot of problems with my... A marriage, you know, my wife didn't want me to be a part of any scene whatsoever, especially this one. So when they asked me to prospect, I turned it down and I turned it down for her. So much later, we split. We made it official. Now, when I told the guys from the crew, they came down to the coast, they immediately offered me a prospect patch. And I went, yeah, absolutely, I'm going to take it. I was voted in that November as a prospect. And I put a lot of work in and my time. I started organizing these events that I've talked about in my other videos. And I started promoting that scene massively. And I became quite a prominent figure. Everyone started knowing who I was, including Australian Federal Police and ASIO. You know, they were visiting my house or ASIO was visiting my workplace. And so, yeah, you know, I definitely dove into it. And I became a full patch member a year later. I did 12 months as a prospect. And then I patched in as a full member. I was a full member for two and a half years. And in that time, I did a lot for that scene. I did a lot for the crew. Initially, when I left, when I handed my patch in, I left on good standing. Yeah, you know, I handed everything in. I talked to all the members, told them my reasons, and it was understood that I was leaving for my own reasons, which were right to me. But then months later, you know, they had a meeting and put me out on bad standing. Uh, okay, whatever. But I was done with that. I was done with that life. And then I spent the next seven years going through a lot of hell. I had caused myself a lot of trauma and a lot of mental health issues in those years. I wasn't aware of it, you know, but shit had gotten crazy up here. It all came crashing down and... 2016 and yeah, I had to change my life. And I have worked hard for the last few years on changing my life and I have, and I've changed it for the better. So now I'm sure so many of you are just dying to know what MC I was with and what skinhead crew I was with. As far as the MC goes, I will never mention their name in my videos. And the reason for that is because I was not a member. So I'm not authorized to put their name out there publicly. I don't want anyone ever to watch my videos and say, oh, well, he said he was a member of this club when I wasn't. I only talk about my experiences in those time and what I went through later as a result of that, you know, all those years of partying and whatever. And I also only share information about the club. That is public knowledge. You can Google it. I'm not going to uh, incriminate anyone, including myself, in any of my videos. So, yeah, as far as naming that MC goes, not going to happen on my video. As far as the skinhead crew goes, I am going to name them just this one time on this video and that's it it's going to be done now i was a full patch member of the southern cross hammerskins now the southern cross hammerskins is the australian arm of the hammerskin nation which is the world's largest 
patched skinhead crew. Now they had at the time when I was a member, they had 22 chapters in 13 countries. Uh, Germany alone, I believe, had almost uh, 200 members. So it wasn't a small organization. It has also been around since the late 80s. So I believe almost 40 years. Now the reason I have not mentioned their name in any of my other videos is because I don't want to bring attention to them. I don't want people going and seeking them out, you know, because they think, oh, this might be a cool life, because it's really not. It's just a hateful existence with no purpose whatsoever. Trust me. And I talk about that in a lot of my videos. But I just wanted to put it out there for everyone who's been asking me what gang I was with. Now you know. I am going to continue talking about my experiences in those years and mostly with the focus on how I healed. And I'm also going to be doing a lot more videos in the future of healing methods that can actually help. And I'm, you know, talking about with anxiety and depression and stress and all that kind of stuff. I have a lot of different methods that I have used that have been effective in helping me through all the trauma and getting to where I am now. So stay tuned for those ones. If you ever need to talk about your experience, get some advice about things that may help, please always reach out to me. I know these videos do reach a lot of people who have left this life, but the life hasn't left them and they don't know how to move on. And that's what's important. That is it for another week. I will see you on Sunday for another amazing video, but thank you all so much for tuning in and watching these videos and blowing them up. It's been absolutely incredible. Just really appreciate all your support. It's been fantastic. And if you wanna support the channel, as always, there are many, many different ways. Uh, give us a big like, super likes. Um, you can buy merchandise, yeah, I love that. Or you can buy me a coffee. Or as always, if you just give us a big like and hit that button to subscribe and of course a little bell to get notified, and tune in every Thursday and Sunday night for these videos. Be much appreciated. Take care, peace out, and love and light to you all.